hi everyone welcome to my new series here on the channel last year and this is the only time it during the series that I will do this intro because while I was doing mind sight in 2020 I did I seemed to do wanted to do the intro every single video <laughs> I'm not gonna do that this time because it takes a lot of a lot of time away from the actual subject matter I really wanted to explore the 12 Jungian archetypes I'm not going to go over what they are right now, um, but I kind of want to deep dive, but I did want to add a little bit more of my art journaling here on the channel. And basically what that looks like is a vision board inside of a journal. Okay. That's it. Mag as you can see up here, like, like ransom note type letterings. I have a little doodads off to the side that I may tape or glue in. It just depends on what I'm feeling as, as I'll be exploring these archetypes, I'll be doing most of the work off camera, like cutting out images and things like that. And then when I come on camera, I want to talk a little bit about the archetype as I'm gluing everything down, writing down notes inside the journal itself. So hopefully at the end of 2021, I'll be able to look at a completed journal at an ex like an experience and exploration into the 12 young men archetypes. So there's the intro. So like I said, this is a new series and it's going to take place the same time as my mind site. So every new moon come onto the channel for some archetype love. <laughs> okay. Today we are going to be doing number one on most of the websites I was able to explore it. I guess you could say some of the, websites had the archetypes in like a in like an some kind of order right one thing i have learned and i had learned even before wanting to dive into this type of a exploration is that archetypes are that thing that mostly dominates our personality we may find one or a couple that we think relates to us but it could be multiple right and so I wanted to explore each archetype so that at the end of 2021, I'll be able to see a little bit more into myself as well, which was a lot of what mindsight was for me. And exploring this archetype, this was, it was kind of surreal for me because I did feel very much like I am an, I, I mean, I realized that I'm an innocent and I had to do a lot of shadow work with that because not a lot, some shadow work with that because I found that to be incredibly, I thought it was incredibly disempowering. Like, you know, usually you find out something about yourself and you're like, oh, well, that's great, you know? <laughs> and then you find out some other things about yourself and you're like, oh, I don't know if I like that about myself. <laughs> But it's an exploration into what you can do now that you know certain things about yourself. And all the research I've done into the innocent archetype is all on the child, right? This, this child and like innocence and this almost like naivete. Now, if we're talking in terms of like, let's say tarot or something, that may be the full card. But I think that there's a lot of I guess you could call them characters that would have parts of the innocent in them they start out that way don't they and I just found it to be incredibly enlightening to learn about the innocent because I, you want to kind of be innocent in a way so that you're when you explore new things in your life you're a little bit more open-minded I feel like there is an open-mindedness with innocence in a sense but then there's also shadows like this whole concept of a utopian world that doesn't really exist and and I'm just gonna I'm really going off intuition here as to uh what this is supposed to look like when I when I heard the term utopia my mother always um 
I don't even know if there's like a direct quote for what she used to tell us, but there was, it was something about land of milk and honey, right? Basically is that it's difficult to get there. And I guess the concept of that was when she would tell us it would be in a situation that would, that would allow us to know that there is no such place, that there is no such place as a land of milk and honey, that now for my parents, they're completely and utterly pious. So there's a religion aspect to their sense of paradise is that you can only gain that through death and I guess spiritual enlightenment. But whenever I hear the term utopia, I think of land of milk and honey. And while that's great, to think that way. I, I have to come back to where in my life am I being too naive, too gullible with how the world is. Um, there's, it's almost like being sympathetic to the things that happen in inside the world. Like when you look at the media and things and you, you really have this thought that you want, like the world isn't how it seems. It's, you know, you're kind of naive about it. You're like, oh, well, there's still lots of good in humanity and things like that. And again, those are great mindsets to have, but then we also have to look at the shadow aspect of that naivete and that, symp that sympathy that we have with the world. And when you get burned, it's about learning, right? I believe sometimes it's about learning how not to stay in that mindset that you need to be able to learn from your mistakes. And if you always stay in a sense in a, from a place of innocence, I don't know, I guess it doesn't lend to learning. It doesn't lend you to learn new things. I love this lace. Also, I'm, I'm putting this lace here because in my head, I feel that the term innocent could also, and that has shadow work involved with me as well when I think of purity, like actual purity. Now with the innocent, I believe that, I guess you just call it a, their goal is to get to paradise, right? Again, some of, some people, it has a religion aspect of it, you know, a religion aspect to it. Like a, you can't get there until after you pass on. And while I guess that is a, to me, someone who's moved away from Christianity, I've since learned that that in and of itself, that waiting until you die to get to paradise, it can be a crutch. It can be a way to justify your actions because you're like, oh, I can be forgiven and then I can still get into paradise. And it's, it's, not allowing you to find the paradise that is now. And I find that extremely dishelpful. Like that's not, it's not going to help me in my spiritual endeavors. So there's areas in my life where I'm innocent, you know, and then there's areas of my life that I want to be, you know, then, then there's that area of being sympathetic to humanity, finding the good in the human. And again, I think that those are incredibly Powerful. I'm going to write Utopia here. A need for an untarnished soul. which isn't fair for to hold that, to hold that I need an untarnished soul. Again, we go back to like the sin aspect of it. I, I have a, I keep going back to that sin aspect because I think of the way in which people ask for forgiveness to whoever you do ask for forgiveness if you do and how 
there's the relief after you've asked for this forgiveness. But then that also could be a way in which you aren't holding yourself accountable for your actions because you're like, oh, I'm forgiven by my God. It's perfectly okay. And in some instances, it's not. Just because you're going to be forgiven, you still have to be held accountable on this earth for your actions. Because otherwise, how as a species are we going to grow and learn and evolve? We can't without learning and growing through our mistakes and being held accountable. I think it's incredibly helpful when we do and when we're forced to be accountable for our actions. So that need for untarnished soul has to be somewhere in here because that's there's a big emphasis on that. And I don't want to write all the bad things about the innocent. I like a childlike innocence. Right? When I find something new or when I want to learn a skill, like a language or some, something along those lines, there's, it's good to embody the innocent. It's good to come at it with like a childlike kindness and grace and acceptance. You think of children. They, they have this pure acceptance of others unless they get a bad gut feeling. There's lots in children that, there's lots about children that as adults, we've forgotten about that innocent, innocence. And how they're so open, their hearts are so open and their minds are so open, but their intuition is on lockdown. They have got that gut feeling down to a science. And somehow as we grow older, we sh our innocence shreds right? And as your innocence gets peeled like an onion, the raw, the raw of, of who you really are starts to close down. Because as you peel the layers off, you feel more and more vulnerable. And then you feel like you have to tack more and more walls up to protect yourself. It's just, I think that's how life goes. But then as you remember back to those times, I think that's why working with your inner child, parenting your inner child is important because you need to go back to that innocence, find where those layers were shed and then put a better protective barrier up, not just a brick wall because those are hard to get, those are hard to break down. So yes, protect yourself, but then also remember a time where you are the innocent. Craves happiness. Isn't that a beautiful concept? Now, sometimes I'll gonna want to paint like on the page. I'm going to want to paint certain things. I want to paint this milk up here. So I want it to look like it's flowing out of the word. And it's kind of pearlescent. So there's a, it'll be a beautiful, it add a beautiful texture. Like this milk is really flowing. I often thought about the land of milk and honey and why it was called that. And it wasn't until I took a milk bath. I found a recipe for a Cleopatra milk bath online one, one time years ago. And I followed the recipe and took that bath and it was so great. And I don't think it was so much the bath itself, but the way it made me feel. The way it linked me to all the Cleopatras. This, I guess this spa-like treatment that I felt after the bath. Like I had just come back from the spa. That feeling of being utterly taken care of was great.
and honey too. I think that, that together in the ancient times, they were the best thing, like food of the gods, so to speak. This milk and what it did to our bodies and our hair and our you know skin and same thing with honey right add sweetness to otherwise bland dishes and how great it would be to live there all the time but how unrealistic that is at the same at the same time so the innocent it's motto is free to be you and me its goal is to get to paradise to be happy find happiness through anything their greatest fear is punishment punishment for doing something wrong again with the crutch if you sin hold yourself accountable get out of the innocent archetype for a little while own up to your mistakes and that will be how you grow there's an optimism in the innocent that, again, is very, I think it's very real, this optimism. But I also think as our innocence shreds over time throughout adulthood, so does that optimism. And then we embody other archetypes in order to protect ourselves better. The dreamer aspect, I'm a daydreamer, always have been. I've been belittled for that, but I remember that feeling of going off into my own little space and how happy I was in those times and how I don't do it a lot anymore because I have more archetypes embodying my persona right now. I've added and let go of some and that's life. Free. Free. I want to write free. You know, let's draw a B here. Or multiple Bs. Because the land of milk and honey would be full of bees, right? Wouldn't it? <laughs> He's how intense would the buzzing feel or how, how think of the land of milk and honey. If you take anything away from this, from this innocent archetype that we're exploring today, I tried to think of the land of milk and honey itself and what would it look like? Would it look like something out of Willy Wonka, right? Like where there's milk waterfalls everywhere <laughs> and hundreds and hundreds of beehives in this meadow with all these wildflowers because that's what bees would need to produce the honey is pollen. And so you think about the process of bees and honey and how you're laying down in this field of flowers, right? In this meadow and there's Lots of wildlife, maybe, but barely any humans. It would be like an animal-centric meadow. And the humming of the bees would be so intense that it just kind of lulls you to sleep. But think after a long time. How annoying that would be. Well, I hope this small exploration into the innocent helps, helps you a little bit. Come back on the next new moon and we'll explore another archetype. Much love.